There's been a lot of gobblers sighted out here lately, and today we're out here on Rancho del Arroyo. We're going to be hunting for the turkey, taking out the new electronic game caller. So this is going to be the location that we're going to set up our decoys at right here. It's kind of an awesome spot because it's right out in the wide open. There's one little hump right here that sticks out from quite a ways away. And I think this is going to work out pretty well. We got five decoys set up here, and what I want to do is set up our tripod right here roughly 40 yards out basically it's going to be right behind this brush so when the turkeys come in they're not even going to know what hit them now we're going to set up our collar right over here near the decoys so the goal is that they're going to hear the collar and then they're going to come into the decoys and during that time it will present us with a nice opportunity for a shot but the fact that we have javelina out here too is pretty awesome we could potentially even call them in as well. Oh, there they are right there. If there's a decent one out there, we just may try and call them in. So far, we only see two male and it's not that impressive. But you know what? What the heck? We're out here. It's uh, a day early before we're going to be turkey hunting. So why not try and call in some javelina? We got the caller. Let's let it go to work. So while we're sitting here waiting for these javelina to come in, I'm going to show you the exact location that we're at right now and kind of the setup that we have going for. So we have our tripod right here. We happen to have a turkey zone right here, which is roughly 150 yards away from us. Then there's another zone right here, roughly 215 yards away from us. Um, to be specific, he is exactly um, 215 yards away from this decoy. Okay, there's a female. We should have plenty of time to be able to take a shot on this one without spooking the rest of them and even if we did spook him in fact there he is right there 40 yards out make that 15 yards oh my god he fell over oh dude there he is full strut full strut right there 80 yards out oh that's so cool it's slowly shifting to the right side though, so there's a chance. Nope, he's gonna bust, he's gonna bust. Wait, 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 wait. He's coming right towards us. He's coming right towards us. Hold on, hold on, he's gonna land right on the decoys. Oh, what a perfect setup. What a perfect setup. He's full strut, 20 yards away from the decoys. Where's he going now, where's he going now? Well, that's not so good. I'm not sure where the other gobbler went, but there was definitely another gobbler in there. Well, at this point, we should probably take down a hen. Another hen there. Yeah, let's try and take down a hen. Whoa, how the heck are we gonna hit something with this? Dude, this is gonna be so hard. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> what dude honestly how we're gonna have to practice thank god we took a shot with this thing already all right let's be real here we've never actually shot this thing without a sight before so we're gonna head to the target range here and make sure we get this thing sighted in first off we're gonna go for a 20 yard shot it's actually 15 again we're gonna use the maybe like a quarter inch up from right there okay so we definitely got that down but that shot is only 15 to 20 yards out. And that's even a little bit high. All right, perfect. Now let's go for the next one, which I do believe is 30. Yep, that's 30. 30 is probably gonna be where we're gonna be taking our shots. So maybe we could just use that little mark right there. Let's see if we can hold on the bottom. Oh. That just may work. I mean, it's pretty close. If we hold bottom. Yeah, that'll work. That'll for surely work. You see what I'm talking about? That little tiny piece sticking up. It's almost like a triangle right there. That's the exact level that we're using. And we're obviously holding left because it's not centered on the arrow. If that was centered on the arrow, we could just use that, to be honest. And we're holding low. Perfect. 
Now we'll go for one shot here at 40 just so we can see if we can potentially take that shot if we need to. Wow. Okay. I feel like 40 is even more accurate than 30. 40, that dot is dead on. Well, I'll tell you what, if that thing comes out to 40, he's getting absolutely smoked. All right, here we go. We got a head approaching the decoys right here, about 50 yards out, right behind. Should be, yes, he is right. There's our gobbler. Unfortunately, the wind shifted and it's now blowing right towards this gobbler. He's 50 yards out. We're going to have to get ready and go for a shot here. Got him. We got him. And we took a follow up as well. And that's going to take him down right over there. It was a little bit further than what I would have liked, but we definitely connected on both of our shots. Oh my God. Look what's coming in right behind us. We got three hens and a gobbler, a gobbler. Nice gobbler, nice gobbler coming in full strut right there. We got to turn the collar back on. We turned it off for just one second. Another gobbler, you gotta be kidding me. Another gobbler coming in here, 50 yards out, full strut. We actually have two gobblers coming in right now, working the same exact time. That's him, that's him. Look at this, they're both coming in here, full strut, less than 30 yards out from us. They should come right into the decoys. Now we're not gonna be able to let them come that close because the wind again is shifting that way. So once they get to this little opening here, we're gonna have to take the shot for about 20 yards. We are gonna try and double up. Ooh, that's 30 yards there. We're gonna take that shot. That's perfect. We're gonna take that shot. Remember, 30 yards, we gotta hold low. Okay, this thing's coming right towards us here. I don't even know where to aim at this point. Aside from right there, smoked him. Doubled up! Gotta follow up into him as well, and he's going down! Yes! Alright, he's not going far. He's gonna fall over right there. That's what I'm talking about. Woo! It's a good thing we pulled back fast and got a follow up quickly on that second one. Because honestly, he probably wasn't going to stick around for too long. But now we happen to have two gobblers down. Actually, make that three, if I could count. I forgot about this one, which is piled up right over there. All right, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn the collar off for a little bit. Let these turkeys calm down. And then we'll turn it back on. And when I say a little bit, I'm talking a good five minutes or so. Let everything calm down here, get back to normal, and then we'll turn it back on. And I think we're actually going to put out the crow collar. There's a max weight gobbler coming in right here, less than 100 yards out, full strut, right there. Wow, what a big old gobbler. And the other one is pretty decent as well. He's right back over in there. But I am so happy this big one is finally coming in. I knew he was around here somewhere. I knew there was definitely one big gobbler somewhere in this area. Because I have seen him a couple times. But I just never see him when I really want him to come into the call. Well now, he is coming right in. And there he is right there. About 80 yards out. Coming right towards us. Oh, look at that. There he is right there. 30 yards out from us. Wow. That is so awesome. We're just gonna let him come right to the decoys. Just let him work his way in. Oh, got a hen right here. And our other gobbler should be working his way in any minute now as well. He's 40 yards out coming right towards us. We're gonna take a shot. As soon as he steps out, we're gonna let one fly. All right, there he is right there. Oh, follow-up shot got him. 
Whew. Our first shot was a little bit high. I think it's probably because we're super high up shooting downwards. I don't know. I thought that was 40 yards. Was it not 40 yards? It's actually 45 yards. Those are all hands there. Come on. Where's that Maxway Gobbler? Well, we got one down. But there's a couple more left. Yeah, this caller isn't exactly working like I was hoping it was going to. I mean, it should call them right into the decoys. And then they should go to the decoys. But for some reason, they're stopping before they even get to the decoys. So I'm thinking maybe next time, once we get them coming this direction, we're actually going to turn the caller off in hopes that maybe the decoy attraction takes over and brings them in. Got another turkey coming in here. I believe that's the hen that should be with our Max White Gobbler. So he should be coming in any second now. And again, if we spot him coming this direction, we're going to turn the caller off so that hopefully the decoys attract him the rest of the way. Well, we've been waiting for about 20 minutes now and there's no sign of this Maxway Gobbler yet. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to get down and start picking some of these gobblers up around us here. That way we don't forget any and also just because we need to start picking some up. So let's get down there and start taking a look at them. First off, we're going to start with the one that we took right here at less than 15 yards away. We made an epic shot and we actually did hit him perfectly right in the lung going straight to the heart 4.27 gold it is a buff and it was 11.6 yard shot very cool looking gobbler down and that's our first gobbler of the hunt now normally i'd be a little bit disappointed in myself the fact that we missed two gobblers in a row but with this new sight system here not necessarily sight um basically with this new aiming system with this arrow it makes it a lot more difficult than, say, the 420s or the 600s. So I'm all right the fact that we did miss twice. Not that I tried to do that, but uh, it happens. Which, in reality, was a pretty good shot because if you get an intestine on a gobbler, it's going to take it down. And then we did get a follow-up and try to get him in the wing and hit him a little far back again. I think what it was is we actually shot high both times. Then we got this one down right here, which is our first gobbler of the hunt. And our shot went wide right. It was a hit. 48 yards. But we went a little bit right. Then we got a follow-up shot. And that shot was almost perfect. Ended up going straight for the lung. And that's a 4.18. We got a hen coming right towards us. Oh my god, there's our Maxwell Gobbler. Another one. Both Gobblers are coming in. Both Gobblers are coming in. So again, the wind is shifting off to the right side. So hopefully we get his attention and get him to turn left very shortly here otherwise we might be going for a 50 yard shot which we're not going to be going for a 50 yard shot because we have no clue where to even hold for that distance but we might be going for a 50 yard shot oh <laughs> we just absolutely freaking smoked him at 50 yards we made a better shot at 50 yards than we did at 20. <sighs> what a shot. Now there's another gobbler over there as well. Right there he is. That is a little bit too far. Not going to be going for a 90 yard shot. That was so funny because I literally just said 50 yards is a little too far and we're not going to be going for that shot. And then I said, actually, maybe we are. <laughs> And not only did we hit the shot, we absolutely made a beautiful shot. Wait, 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 wait. He does in fact know that we're here, but I think we might get lucky enough that the window shift. Tell you what, I want to get down. So we can shift over our scent more to the right side here. That way there's a chance that the wind will shift even more before it gets close enough. And then it won't be able to sense us by the time it gets into the decoys. It's worth a shot. We'll see what happens. All right, let's try and work our way back into the tripod here. It looks like the wind is shifting pretty well in our favor, blowing directly to the south. And these turkeys should be coming in from the east side over here any minute now. Although I believe there's only one gobbler. 
Look at that. The hen is coming in right there. The hen just came right past us. Perfect timing. There's our gobbler. He's 30 yards out right there. Got him. Dropped a touch low, but that's going to be money. And we'll take him down right there. Yes. That's another doubled up. There we go. So he was, in fact, up and flapping his wings. We dropped a little low at 35 yards. But again, that follow-up was perfect. Top of the lung, 36 yards and a 4.28. And then we got this one over here, and this should be the last gobbler of the area. That was a 57-yard spine lung shot on the walk. What an absolutely epic shot on a gobbler. If you can get spine and lung on a turkey, you really can't beat that shot because they're gonna drop right on the spot. Literally the most perfect shot you could possibly make right there on a huge 4.38 gold gobbler. Ooh, did you hear that? That's what we're looking for. We just got a call from a gobbler right on the backside of this hill. So we put up our decoys right over there and we're gonna try and get to the top of this point here. We're not going to have any time to set up our tripod because we're too close. But we're just going to sit up here and see what we can see. Oh, there he is. He's right there, 40 yards out from us. Right in that brush. He's coming in quick. Really quick. 30 yards, 20 yards right there, full strut. That's in range for a shot. Smoked him, perfect shot. We dropped him right there. That's what I'm talking about. What an epic shot. Oh, another gobbler, another gobbler coming in. Another gobbler right there. What do we got over here? Got a hen there. Another max weight gobbler coming in. He's a hundred yards out, slowly working his way in. All right, let's try and make our way back to the top here so we can see our decoy set up. It's actually right behind us right there. About 20 yards out. You can see we have the collar set up right there. And this gobbler is coming right in. Now that gobbler came in pretty good. He might have came a little bit closer and potentially came into the decoys, but I just figured 20 yards, he was stopped right there. Everything was perfect, so we just went for it. And it worked out pretty good. They're all coming in right to the decoys. Oh, right there, right there, right there, right there. Gobbler, gobbler, gobbler. He was so close. I don't know where he came from. Oh, right over top of him. Oh, son of a. Right over the top of him. That was a different gobbler. That's not the same one. That means there's two more gobblers out here. Right there's one of them. And the other gobbler's got to be... Yep, there we go. We cannot move because he's looking right at us. And these turkeys have... Ex oh, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Okay, we got to shift down, we got to shift down. Come on, come on, come on. You can't see us, you can't see us. These turkeys have incredibly good eyesight. So we had to slide over. The wind is actually shifting, finally. How's it looking? How's it looking? Ooh, it's looking good. There he is. Oh my god. Oh my god. Gobbler. 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 Right behind us. He just snuck in. He just snuck in. You gotta be kidding me. Where did he even come from? Where are my arrows? Okay, we fixed it. Thank God. There's a gobbler. No, did he just take off? You have to be freaking kidding me. He just came all the way into the call. We crouch up to go for the shot and the arrow was glitched out. 
As in, there was no arrow in the rest. Absolutely no arrow at all. So we pull back and nothing happened. <sighs> he came. He's coming back in. He's coming back in. He's right there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Pull back. We got him. Oh, oh. That was such a close shot. We literally pulled off an instinctive five yard shot on that gobbler. I mean, honestly, I thought we were going to be a little bit too low, but the thing dropped instantly. So we must have hit it pretty good. And that was also a max weight gobbler. This gobbler here is still having quite a bit of difficulty trying to get up over this ridge. And um, I don't know what we can really do about that. One thing I do think we could potentially do is take a shot over there to try and change his course of action. Dude, we almost hit him. <laughs> All right, that should work. Well, we got him out there at 50 yards. And it looks like he's finally coming in. This time, when he comes into 50, we're going to take the shot. So he should come in to right there. Oh, I forgot we have the shotgun as well. What's he going to do? Here we go, here we go, here we go. He's still a good ways out there. Oh my God, can you say epic shot? We freaking just pulled off a neck shot at 50 yards. Woo! Wow. He's actually right there, 50 yards out. Let's go for the shot. Let's get ready, let's get ready. Oh, he's coming right in. Try the old crow call, see if we can't get his attention. All right, this should work here. Yup, he's stepping out, he's stepping out. Smoked him. He's down. Those are all hens. There is another gobbler somewhere over there, but oh my god, look at all these turkeys taking off. That might be a gobbler. There is a gobbler right there. Yep, that was him. Look at them all. I'll show you where we are on the map right now. We're over here by Jara Bada del Diablo. And it is right on the very west end of the map, right over here by this outpost, Casa de los Ortega. Let's start out with this one that we took down with a 12 gauge shotgun. We had to wait a long time for him to step out, I'll tell you what. But when he finally did, the 12 gauge did quite a number on him 37 yards, 4.33 gold. And then we got this one down here. This one was a good sized one as well, I believe. Oh, that was the big one. Dude, he was almost a diamond. That was a 45 yard perfect neck shot with the bow. 4.5 gold. Absolute giant gobbler. And a perfect, perfect shot. And we got this one down here, which we took right below us. And he's laying right here. That was an epic 28 yard shot. He was also another max weight gobbler. 4.4 gold. Let's take a look at that shot. 28 yards, perfect long shot. He was actually quartered at us and he knew something was going on. We took the shot, let one fly and hit absolutely perfectly. And the last one, but not least, is right here. The max weight gobbler. It's gonna be a 4.49 gold. We took him at 10 yards away. We literally instinctively shot this thing. Didn't even use the sight because it was so close. Got a liver and stomach shot. And he's a 
massive gold. Though the spot that we were at yesterday was a pretty good solid spot, we took down five really good gobblers, including two max weight gobblers. We decided to find another spot for tomorrow, and while we were doing some scouting here, we happened to find a flock of not just one, or two, or even three, but there's four max weight gobblers. And we're gonna be going out there bright and early tomorrow morning. Man, am I pumped. All right, we just got out here bright and early the next morning and take a look what we just spotted right over there. There's a huge white tail buck. He's a 200 plus. That's actually another big buck, 180 plus out there, but that is our huge white tail. He's 170 yards out from us. And while we're waiting for these gobblers to come in, we're gonna actually try and call in this monster white tail buck. You can see we have our decoy set up right here behind us, roughly 30 yards out. So let's get this caller on and see if we can't get this big buck to come into range. Actually, I think what we might do is move the caller behind us a little bit because that is roughly 180 yards out. We do have a little bit of leeway that we can move the caller behind us. That way if they stop before they get to us, then they'll still be in range. Look at the gobblers are coming in. Gobblers are coming in already. We're gonna have to make up our mind quick. Uh, I think we're still gonna try and call in this big buck first. And potentially we'll call in the gobblers as well. They both might come in, to be honest. But let's try and set this up right over here. Right there. Oh boy. Yep. I figured you'd see us. It's a bit unfortunate. We could still call him in. Don't worry. Don't worry. Max weight gobbler coming right towards us. You gotta be kidding me. If only we could make it a little bit further and get into our tripod. We'll be setting pretty good. We're barely going to be able to make it into the tripod in time. Before these things are right on top of us. Which, it's not like I'm complaining. But we're in a little bit of a pickle here. Alright, let's get in and try and... Okay, well, I'll tell you exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> we got these gobblers coming right in. And we're going to call them in. That's exactly what we're going to do. And here we go. He's about to step out 45 yards away right behind that brush. Ooh, we got hens right on top of us here. Right on top of us. This gobbler's stepping out right there. Here we go, here we go, here we go. That's in range. He's about 45 yards out right there. We'll let him come a little bit closer. And that's about where we're going to take him. 45 yards. Absolutely smoked that gobbler. What a heck of a shot. Wow. Now the other gobbler I do believe took off, but that's all right. We got the biggest one down. Man, I am pumped. All right. So now what we're going to do is we'll turn this collar off and try and call in that huge white tail buck over there. All right, guys, take a look what's coming in right here. We actually just got down to move the collar over and there's a whole nother flock of turkeys coming in. There's a gobbler right in the back right there. I do believe our white-tailed deer are actually coming this direction at this point. So we're going to have to make up our mind again what we want to do. We might go for kind of a far shot on this gobbler. Look at the size of this flock here. There's a max weight gobbler right there. A bunch of hens. Another hen there. Oh, another nice buck decided to come in as well. And there was another gobbler out there somewhere. <laughs> Holy, where's our big buck? Did our big buck come in? Oh my God, he's coming in. There he is right there. He's 150 yards out. All right, well, the gobblers should go to their spot. I'm not really too worried about that, but these whitetail all came right in. I turned the collar off for a second because it was honestly a little bit much to have them all coming in at once. Look at this, look at, there's the collar right there. And there are so many animals all around us here. Got a doe right on top of us here. 
We have the 420s ready and our big buck should be stepping out here any second. Well, he's actually taking his sweet time. He's way in the back. But he's still working his way in. He's right out there, as a matter of fact. About 120 yards out and closing. Another good buck there as well. 180 plus right there. Nice looking rack on him. Big old swamp buck. But look at all the deer. Unbelievable. Then we got all the turkeys over there. Three hens, four, five hens. We got the one max weight gobbler. And there should be two more max weight gobblers out there as well. In fact, I know there is. It's just a matter of where. Right there's two of them. Right there. One and one. Man, is he taking his time to come in. Now, I'll tell you what. I wouldn't mind taking this 180 plus whitetail right here. Because he's right below us. 25 yards out. Perfect shot. Smoked him. Didn't drop him, but definitely smoked him. And... I was hoping that wasn't going to spook our big buck, but uh, it actually didn't. He's still calm, but he's also not interested in this caller at all for some reason. And maybe that's because he's really big, but whatever it is, we got to figure something out here because he is not showing any interest. And he's just going to sit there and eat, apparently. Well, we do have the grunt. We could always use that again. We do have another 180 plus buck there as well. I mean, we might as well try and take him down too. He's a little 40, about 40 yards out there. Did I just say he's a little 40? <laughs> I meant he's a little further, about 40 yards out. But he is slowly working his way closer. Right on the bottom of that hill. Okay, hold up. The big buck did turn around and he is in fact facing this direction. That is not our big buck. But that is our big buck, and he is, in fact, facing this direction. Okay. At this point, what we are going to do is try the grunt. See if we can do a combination of the grunt. Oh, that buck came running. They all actually started moving. But I'm wondering if the combination of the e-caller and the grunt just might get this big buck to come into range. The wind is perfect. All he's got to do is come this direction. Yep, here we go. It's working. It's working. Although this buck here is maybe a little bit too close for comfort. But luckily, he ran the right direction. And he's not really going to spook anything else. Come on. He's only right there at 127 yards. But boy, he doesn't want to come any closer. Not even a little bit. These deer are right on top of us here. There's no way we're going to pass up this shot. Smoked him. All right, let's see what that does. What I want to do now is actually get down and then try and call in this buck. We'll slide over a little bit more so it sounds more realistic and it doesn't seem like the deer is calling from the top of a tripod. Maybe that'll help. I don't exactly like that this buck is coming so close to us here. But our buck is about to be in range right there. He's 40 yards out. Bit of a tough angle right there. But we'll wait and see what happens. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. 40 yards. 40 yards. That's perfect right there if he just stopped. Smoked him! Woo! Perfect shot. We got him, finally. Oh my god. That buck was one big old smart buck. He absolutely did not want to come into the call. We turned the e-caller on a couple times, moved it a couple times, it did nothing. We even tried the grunt, it still didn't work. We had to get down, call from the ground, and he finally started coming in, got him to 40 yards, pulled back, let one fly, and we absolutely smoked him. All right, now let's get down and start picking some of these up. We got three bucks, 
and a gobbler. Then after that, we're gonna try and call in the rest of the gobblers. We picked up his blood right there. And we couldn't find him because he's buried right here. I ended up pulling off a 45 yard left lung intestine shot on this huge gobbler. He's gonna score 4.51. Actually got him the lung and the wing bone. So an epic, epic shot and a huge gobbler down as well. So then we'll go over here and grab these two bucks. They're both 180 pluses. This is a great looking buck here. 187 lung liver at 27 yards and then this buck here is a 184 24 yard lung and spine shot cool looking rack i actually quite like this rack i wouldn't mind finding this rack in like a rare you know i think that'd be pretty cool and of course let's get over here and take a look at our huge white tail buck that we finally took down with the new recur bow and open sights he's laying right over here Look at the size of that rack. Wow. There he is. Let's get a cool picture of that. Tell you what. Ooh, that looks awesome. I like that a lot. And let's pick him up. It's going to be a 219 gold and we pulled off a 40 yard lung and liver shot. Perfect, perfect shot. He was actually almost broadside, slightly quartering at us. And we hit right there. Beautiful shot, especially to be able to drop him at 40 yards. That's quite impressive and an awesome looking buck as well. He ended up weighing 219 pounds and a great rack on him as well. Well, we found the other Maxway gobblers. In fact, they're out there about 400 yards out from us, quite a ways out as well as another herd of whitetails. So, we're gonna have to move our setup a little bit closer there. Otherwise, I don't know how the heck we're gonna get these things to come into the call. Let's do that. Let's pick this stuff up and head on over there. All right, so I think our best bet is to try and get over here and get on top of this big ridge top looking down this valley and we might potentially be able to spot this whole flock of gobblers. Now, the last time I looked, they were actually headed sort of this direction. So we got to take it easy and be careful because at any moment they could potentially spot us. As I've said in the past, these turkeys have incredibly good eyesight. Pretty sure they all took off. White-tailed deer. Yep, there they go. There they go. Well, we'll have to come back here tomorrow morning and try it again. At least we know one thing. There's a couple of Maxway gobblers and they're not gonna be too far away. So I think what we wanna do is actually, whoa, try and get up on top of this ridge here. And then we'll set up the decoys right down here, as well as the collar. I think that just might work. All right, we'll set those up there and we'll put the collar right back over here. Right over here. So then, yeah, I'm thinking we're gonna get right up there, 50 yards out, right on top of that peak, overlooking down this valley and we should be able to call them right in. Let's go for it. And here they come right here. Look at all the turkeys coming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine turkeys coming in. And I do believe there's three gobblers. Two max weight gobblers to be exact. And another one is just a decent sized one. But they're approaching. Now we have our decoy set up right here. About 50 yards out. So what my goal is this time is to get this whole flock of turkeys to come in to the decoys. Of course, we mainly want the gobblers. And we're gonna take the 12 gauge shotgun with the red dot sight. And we're gonna try and double up, potentially even take down two with one shot. I'm not really gonna try too hard to do that, but if we get it, awesome. If not, we'll smoke one and then take the other one on the fly. 
All right, guys, here we go. They're coming in. They're less than 100 yards out right behind that brush. And there's our Maxway Gobbler right there. Look at his head sticking up. Look at his head. Oh, he's right there. There's another gobbler coming in behind and he's full strut as well. No way. We're going to have two huge gobblers coming in full strut right to the decoys. Couple hands out in the front and take a look at this. Look at that. That is awesome. Yeah, you really can't beat that. There's no other feeling than having two huge gobblers coming in full strut right to the decoys. It really gets your heart pumping and it's just an amazing moment. And especially when this happens, when they start running in, he's getting fired up. He's coming right in. He's 80 yards out and closing. All right, so our decoys are right here and the caller is right back there. So this time what I'm hoping for is that they keep coming past the decoys and stopping here potentially. This gobbler is coming right in. He's about to be 60 yards out from us. Right there. And the other one is right here, even closer at 60. Look at that. Oh, the wind is shifting and not in our favor. We're gonna have to go for a little bit of a further shot than what I was thinking, but that's all right. Let's find the other gobbler. All right. We got him. We got him. We doubled up. Woo. I was making sure we got the right one. I saw him fall over, but I wasn't sure if we actually did get him or not. And uh, well, there's no other ones that were spotting that are gobblers. So that's how we know we got him. This first one got smoked. He was 60. We held right for the head for 50 and he went straight down. What a cool setup. The only thing is the wind happened to shift at the last second and started blowing directly towards our gobblers. Luckily for us, we had an amazing setup and we made it work out in the end. All right, I'm kind of curious how many times we actually did hit this first, this uh, second one here. Because we shot three times at it. <laughs> it looks like we did hit it three times. One hit there, one hit there, and one hit there. Oh, we did hit it three times. And by doing that, we actually affected our score. That's all right though, 65 yards. Yeah, that shot was a little bit far off. Did get one kind of by the vitals, the vitals or lungs there. The second shot, I do think that would have taken him down. Um, but then we shot again as he was already going down. And unfortunately, that is what took out the integrity on this gobbler. But that's all right, because we already got this one. It wasn't even that big anyways, 4.3. Just a decent sized gold one. This one was quite a bit bigger and he's laying right here. It's going to be actually the exact same size but what a heck of a shot 65 yard perfect neck shot and we dropped him right on the spot 4.38 gold gobbler down but there he is right there what a pretty sight to see max weight gobbler coming in full strut 60 yards and we smoked him but on that note that but that is gonna be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you so much for watching and i appreciate all of your amazing comments as well as but that's gonna be it for this video thank you so much for all the amazing ideas and future videos it really means a lot i appreciate that and definitely keep letting me know your thoughts and feedback on future videos so i hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time man What a shot. Oh my God, here he comes, here he comes. Look at that, he's right there, full strut.
How did I know that was gonna happen? <laughs> Luckily for us, we got a follow-up shot and he didn't go anywhere. <laughs>